how's the week been after the game? Has it been a training session yet with girls? Uh, we haven't had a training session, Alex. We uh, came in last night, recovered, uh, did our team review. Um, again, pretty much similar to the week before. Took the learnings out of that game against Geelong and, uh, and we'll move our attention quickly to the Tigers this week. What did you take away from the game? Obviously, you spoke a bit post-game about um, the opportunities that they had and obviously it's not something that happens every game where your opposition has 41 inside 50s, but you get the win. So I guess what do you sort of take away from that? Um, actually, I, I and took a bit of responsibility uh, for the coaches that you know we, we weren't able to move the ball as well as we would have liked on the narrower ground. And I think uh, we could have set the game up a little bit differently. Um, especially when we had the opportunity at half time to reset um, what we were doing. Uh, we did talk about certain aspects of how we wanted to potentially move the ball a bit differently, but probably didn't set the ground up as well as we would have liked. Um, so there were some learnings out of that, just uh, around our ball movement, but the, uh, the biggest thing that was reiterated to the girls last night was that, um, you know, so much of finals football is based around the contest and pressure and 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 team D and uh, that will take you a long way in, in finals football and uh, that were the errors that we absolutely got right. Not that you want to not that you want to play that way uh, and base it on that for the entire game all the time. Just touch on Amy Smith's role a little bit from the weekend. Obviously, seventeen tackles really jumps off the page. But um, what did you sort of? what her role to be during the game and what did you sort of set her the task of doing that I guess led to that I know she spent a bit more time actually inside midfield and doing a bit of tagging but yeah how impressed were you by that? Yeah um, Amy's just come on so much uh, especially this season um, you know she's she's got a real thirst to to uh, to get better um, and the other thing that we all admire about Amy um, is her willingness to play her role for the team and Again, she's been coming inside and doing a little bit uh, more work um, on the inside, potentially going to an opposition uh, better midfielder. Uh, but yeah, as you alluded to, 17 tackles, her defensive pressure has been a standout for us, um, you know, especially in and around the footy. So yeah, that was really important to us on the weekend. And um, yeah, she uh, continues to grow in confidence and belief, but she's become a really important player for us. Darren, uh, Tom from the ABC. Do you think that uh, Saturday should be moved to Pretty Park? Um, yeah, it's a uh, it's a it's a good debate, Tom. I, all I all I'm disappointed f about is that uh, there's you know the the game obviously got sold out in 13 minutes, and there's going to be a lot of you know not just North Melbourne supporters, a lot of our fans, but I'd imagine Tigers supporters as well, which would be pretty disappointed that they can't come along and, and support their teams. And, I've, and you know, I just feel that if we're going to be we're looking to grow a product like AFLW, that you know, this is the time you know, potentially to be able to open it up and yeah, play it at a bigger venue uh, or bigger capacity crowd venue. Um, I think limited it to 2,800 people when, you know, we played Richmond in the uh, last home and away game, our, a non-final, and we had 3,100 people here at Arden Street. So it would make sense to, to move it. But in saying that, you know, from a, from a player's perspective and a coaching perspective, we're happy to play anywhere, anytime. So the fact that it's a punt road... We even moved one of our home games uh, from here at Arden Street because the ground wasn't in great condition at the time to punt road. So we're happy to play wherever we uh, uh, the game gets scheduled to play, but it would make sense to play it on a, uh, at a ground where there's a larger capacity. Hey, Darren, it's Matthew at 7. Just following up on that, this is creating headlines for the AFLW that are probably untimely, like... How unfortunate is it for the sport that this is the talking point leading into to semi-final weekend? Like it's making news on radio, online, the papers, social media, everywhere you look. This is the number one headline associated with this weekend's AFLW semi-final weekend. Is this an own goal for the AFL? Well, it's it, it's disappointing that this this topic is overriding what should be a couple of you know fantastic uh, finals games. Um, so. 
you know, from an AFL perspective, um, you know, I wouldn't have thought that they'd, they'd want these headlines when you've got, you know, two terrific games coming up um, that should be just, you know, open to get fans through the door um, or through the gate um, to support their teams. Um, but as you said, it shouldn't be overriding what should be a, a terrific weekend of uh, finals football. Yeah, has North just one more follow-up from me? Has North made any representations to the league? Have you guys asked the question as to what their thinking is? Uh, no, not really. Um, you know, we, we understand that Richmond finished higher than us you know, on the home and away ladder. They have the right to, to uh, make the call. Um, but you know, I would have thought that the AFL would be asking Richmond, you know, what, why they are so adamant on playing the game at Punt Road where they can only get 2,800 people in and a lot of their own fans are going to get turned away from, uh, from the game as well as North Melbourne fans. But that's not for us to, to judge. As I said, they finished higher on the ladder and it's their right to, uh, to make that decision. Darren, what about the timing of the game? Uh, do you think, given the Matildas game against Sweden on Saturday, that the AFL has misread, misread its audience by, by clashing with the fixtures? To tell you the truth, I didn't even realise the Matildas game was on at that time. So uh, um, you can see that my uh, very narrow focus is purely on AFLW and North Melbourne and, uh, and what we need to do uh, to get the, uh, the W on the weekend. Um, so, you know, again, that's something that uh, the AFL, you'd have to sort of ask the AFL about. You know, as I said, our, our sort of focus here at North is very narrow about just doing what we need to do to prepare for this game and, and hopefully continue to advance through the final series. Just on the game, Croc obviously only lost, I was so true with them two weeks ago. Um, what do you sort of take away from that game and what do you want to do differently this time around that we'll see you away? Um, firstly, Alex, we need to be up for the uh, up for the challenge early. You know, we thought that uh, Richmond caught us on our heels a little bit in that uh, in that round ten game. So we got to make sure that we're up and about early and, and jump out of the blocks um, and not give them the ascendancy early in the game. Uh, felt that from quarter time on, you know, we we reset and uh, got the game looking a lot more the way that we like it to look. Um, we started to win the territory battle. We started to win the contest a lot lot more and gave ourselves opportunities to score, but um, our inaccuracy wasn't great in that game either. Um, so, yeah, there were large parts of that game that, that, that looked okay to us, um, but, yeah, um, we've got to definitely make sure that we're up for it uh, nice and early, which you'd expect the players to be because... Uh, with it being a final, there's no excuses for not being up, getting yourself up for a final. Uh, we saw Jazz heavily tagged in that game too against uh, by Meg McDonald. Uh, is creating ways to free her up and stop you is going to be a focus this week? Oh yeah, look, um, you know Richmond put a lot of time into uh, to Jazz in that game, and uh, I, look, I think from a competition, you just want to see you the better players in the competition, whether it's a uh, you know, Jazz Garner, whether it's a Monique Conti, whether it's an Ali McKenzie, being able to um, display their talent. And, um, you know, we as a team, we learnt a lot from that game that uh, we can be better at actually protecting Jazz and giving her opportunities to uh, get into the game. Um, she would have learned a lot about, you know, herself about uh, getting such close attention in that game. and. Um, and potentially what she can do. But uh, as I said, you like to see the better players, you know, be able to sort of, uh, showcase their talent and, uh, yeah, hopefully uh, we can uh, allow and help Jazz do that on the weekend. Sorry, I've uh, just got uh, any injury updates. Uh, Emma Carney yeah. got through the game really well, um, so she'll be better with another week's training under her belt. Um, Kim Rennie got through the game after health and safety protocols. Uh, yeah, so no, all, all clear um, from our perspective.